Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group Weekly Update for the week ending January the 21st, 2022. A uh, pretty bloody week out there, really. Uh, so we gave you some hot tips uh, last week. We're going to go back and check how some of those did, how those, some of those weathered the storm, given the earnings season against the uh, the uh, rotation that's now in place uh, and the sell-off. And so, yeah, the uh, NASDAQ uh, clearly in the correction territory. It's about so far. We've got about uh, three hours, uh, two, two and a half hours left in the trading day. Uh, three and a half hours left on the trading day at this point. Bounced off of 13.7, but I don't expect that to hold next week just because there's a downtrend and it's fairly pronounced. It'd have to be some fantastic news that would come about, but I can't see what it is. Anyway, uh, watch out for 13,000 that. So translate that into regular speak. I don't think you're at a bottom yet. I think you're around, uh, probably have three to seven percent to go. It's not a fear-based trade. I'm not trying to install any emotions in anybody. I'm just trying to look at the data and say this is what the, the, the evidence is showing uh, for us here. So that's the, the tech-heavy NASDAQ. Some of those companies have lost 20-30%. I don't think that the bleeding is done is what I'm trying to say. You might get a little bit of bounce, a uh, 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 bullish pressure in there, but uh, right now you've got to break a very uh, strong, uh, tending to be a strong trend. Uh, establishing itself and I don't see really a lot to stop it until you hit another uh, uh, 7% down move uh, to 10% so uh, you know around 13,000 uh, th that's what I'd be looking for as a bottom uh, in terms of uh, in, uh, tech heavy companies okay the S&P 500 probably looking at another 2 to 3% uh, on that there's some stop points along the way uh, absolute bottom on that right now. I think uh, if, if we can't stop at 4,300, uh, 4,350, somewhere through there right now, it's seen, trying to hold at 4,450. Um, really not much uh, keeping it that I see uh, going down around uh, the, the 4,350 mark would be a, a nice place to try to reverse it. But uh, if it fails that, then you're looking at 4,250 and uh, not a lot to stop it technically. From going down there so that's where you're at like uh, on those same thing with the Russell uh, 1000 I think the Russell uh, has uh, some exposure there you could probably lose another three percent in that down move there so if you uh, if you want to be a short uh, player then uh, you can always short these guys uh, for the next time being a uh, problem with that is uh, the play is already established you're probably late to the party if you weren't already uh, in on that as you go so let's move on real quickly then to the uh, we give you some, some hits next week that we thought looked good for earnings reports. Indeed, uh, we hit three out of five of those. It was pretty nicely. So the uh, uh, first one here was uh, Schlumberger. Now, Schlumberger popped one out last week uh, uh, after earnings was actually uh, over overbought and, um, and, and then you know came back down this week uh, to within normal trading bounds, but still up. Okay, overall, so uh, that seems to be a good play. No reason to jettison Schlumberger anytime soon. Same story, uh, different different verse, uh, same tune, different verse for J.B. Hunt Transports. Uh, that one uh, kind of moving sideways, but uh, but holding its own there and looking on the bullish side of the fence. And as as the economy continues to reopen, that that will probably prove to be a, a good play there. Uh, what do we have next on the till? I think with Schwab. Uh, again, same tune, different verse with Schwab. It was uh, out. Uh, it was trading higher uh, than the the normal bounds. It came back inside, but is still holding its own there quite nicely. And so that's a profitable position. No reason to uh, give up on that, especially when you compare <laughs> these against what the major indexes have been doing. Uh, you're like, yeah, that, that, that's that's worth a play. Let it ride, okay? Now CSX. I was a little disappointed in the railroads, but hey. Can't find trucks, can't find trains, can't find drivers, I guess, is what the deal is. So that one for the week is uh, is, is uh, looking a little bit like it may turn into a, uh, a bearish trade. Uh, it, it did hold uh, its, 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 its average, though, and trying to bounce back up. I just, uh, that one may be one uh, to let go of next week if it doesn't hold. Same story on Bach Financial, BOK Financial. Um, it traded its full range from the uh, from the upper bounds down to uh, the line of scrimmage is what I call it, the mid excuse me the mid range uh, in there and um, and that's where it's at right now trying to get a bounce trying to hold on 
Uh, I think that's, again, because of the rotation. So if I was going to let any two go, it would be uh, CSX and BOK. I'd let BOK Financial go uh, uh, after uh, I gave it a, a little bit more time to go. Uh, CSX should be correcting in the long term. It depends on how strong your stomach is uh, for that route. So um, if you want to give us a, uh, a shout and, and contact us, you can go to assetguidancegroup.com. You can reach out 404-348-4120 or shoot uh, either uh, myself, W. Nichols, at assetguidancegroup.com or Jared Nichols, J.W. Nichols, at assetguidancegroup.com. Shoot us an email if you want to uh, set up a time to get together and speak. We'll see what we can do to adjust your portfolio uh, for this year because it's not going to get any easier. Okay, We're going through some uh, serious corrections to deal with the actions that the Fed is taking. FOMC will make a report here in about another two to three weeks. Uh, they'll go from there. One report that they did make, uh, that, so we don't know exactly what they're going to do in terms of the rate hike is what I'm saying. That's going to happen in February. What we do know is finally uh, they were supposed to have released their report on crypto back in uh, September. They did actually release it yesterday, this week, and uh, it's a 40-page report. Bottom line is they're non-committal right now. You've got some of the players on the uh, Fed that are leaning towards establishment of a uh, of a United States digital currency, uh, and other ones that are you know a, a little bit concerned that that is uh, a, a tremendous change, and they don't know all of the ramifications that will happen from that. So that report has now been out. I talk a little bit about it in the email. So check that uh, piece out. But uh, the, the overall, uh, right, I can give you a link to an article on it, but the overall concern is, is that uh, we may be getting behind the curve again. China's already dedicated itself to doing a digital currency, central bank digital currency, and uh, uh, why not the United States rather than looking at all of these other players out there? So probably you would have to see all of these other uh, 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 players in the crypto markets right now because there's so much capital that's invested in those uh, get aligned and and see how that's going to match up against those. My, my cynical uh, self says that's the struggle that the Fed has is measuring what they want to do against a digital currency, United States digital currency versus the plays that are already in place right now and um, speaking of which crypto, Bitcoin is just on a downtrend. Uh, that thing probably has another, you know, seven percent to ten percent that that it could easily drop. There's so much volatility in a weekly basis there. It's hard to call that anyway. But the trend has been down for a long time now. And what I'm pointing out here in closing is that crypto was touted to be a hedge last year. Proves out certainly not a hedge. It seems to mark lockstep with the uh, other tech companies, and and so uh, that's what we've been seeing. Okay, if we can help you out, reach out, let us know. There's ways to manage this. I tell you what, in these kind of times, the people that are in, in, in indexed products, okay, where there's no downside risk, sleep 100% easier at night, all right? So think about that uh, the next time you hear somebody with Fisher or somebody else uh, uh, bemoaning and bad-mouthing, denigrating uh, index-based products because they certainly have their place in your portfolio, I'd say anywhere from 10 to 45 percent, depending on your particular situation. Give us a call. Let's talk about it. Find out. Until next time, stay away from the Omicron, stay happy, and we'll talk to you about it next week.